And I broke my heart because you don't want someone you're so close to to move on without you. Hey everyone, welcome back to Canon Cinema. I'm Amanda, otherwise known as AMX Indie Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Today I will be reviewing episode 7 of The Last of Us titled Left Behind. Now, last week we kind of left off where our good old Joel was unconscious and bleeding. And in the opening of this episode, we see obviously like a trail of blood. And of course, the horse did the heavy lifting to try to get Joel to safety with the help of Ellie. And now we see that Ellie is like frantically trying to help Joel, trying to, you know, find bandages, trying to find all sorts of things um, in this house to help him or just be there with him and, and stay with him to see what could be possible but Joel knows that if she does stay with him there the whole point of this journey is that she's safe and protected and then they get her to the end and he kind of fights her on that so right from the beginning Ellie leaves and as she goes to kind of close the door she has a flashback and after, you know, looking at the stuff online about the video game and knowing that this section with Riley's a DLC, it makes perfect sense as to why they would have an entire episode dedicated to Ellie's past to kind of introduce what could possibly happen in season two, which I also know about. I don't know everything. Okay, but I do know some bits and pieces and I think that getting a little bit more of Ellie's backstory, which obviously Bella Ramsey plays it beautifully, it's such a great performance. We get to see why she's so attached to Joel. And of course, she's lost her own people. Riley is one of the people that she was the closest to, was her best friend maybe something more. And what I really liked about this episode is that it was centered on Bella Ramsey to show her chops, basically. So she's in this like boot camp, this school, kind of like a military boot camp. And she is bullied. She has like a little Walkman, which brought me like flashbacks to. She's doing standard drills in uh, in gym class. And this this taller girl kind of bullies her, pokes fun at her. And Ellie has a lot of pent up anger. Normally, Riley would be the one to defend Ellie, but Riley left for like two, three weeks, didn't know where she went. And she became more vulnerable to this girl who was just being extremely rude to her, stole her Walkman, starts wailing on her. We don't see it, which is fine. But we see that Ellie ends up with a black eye, goes to the office, and he knows that she's special. She could be a leader. She could be so much more and has the potential to be so much more she just doesn't care she doesn't want to do anything more than the bare minimum and it says a lot about who ellie is as a character especially in school i think that's really important too and she's sarcastic she's still dry to the officer to the principal if you want to call him and i really love that and she knows that she's going to be like put in the hole for the third time it's not going to help because she's going to keep doing whatever she wants to keep doing but then they cut to her bedroom at night and Riley, who's played by Storm Reed, creeps into her window, puts her hand over her mouth, and Ellie just starts going off, thinking that someone's going to kill her. And meanwhile, it's just Riley. And they have this really weird tension between them. There's a lot of chemistry between the two of them, which you kind of feel like they're not best friends. They're more than best friends. Or they haven't spoken about the fact that they would want to be in a relationship with one another. So you get that chemistry there already. I liked how they developed them within this one episode. I said that about Bill and Frank. I said that about Sam and Henry. And now I'm saying it again with Riley and Ellie. I really do love how strong the writing is for each episode, especially when they're introducing a new character. The only time they failed to do that was with Kathleen. I did not care for a single thing that happened with Kathleen. I don't think she was well written. And those episodes were overshadowed by other characters obviously being sam and henry and you know joel and ellie as well so i think that this can be taken as oh it's such a filler episode but it's also really important to see where the anger stems from in ellie who was taken away from her like it's just really important to see that to understand why she's so connected to joel and ellie loves having her best friend back but riley was going off 
for two to three weeks because she joined the Fireflies. And that is something that Ellie just didn't stand with, couldn't take that. And she wanted her back. She wanted to be safe, you know, and what it what does safe mean in this area, in this post-apocalyptic world? What does safe technically mean? So it's really interesting to see that dynamic change. And Riley was trying to get Ellie to understand where she's coming from, what she wanted to do. And she ended up taking her to this like abandoned mall and planned out like the perfect final date for the two of them and i thought that was really cute it doesn't look like a date on the outside but it felt like the two of them knew that it was something more so you see how playful they are they find like a bottle of alcohol because they saw someone dead and you know they saw the bottle of alcohol they're like okay we're gonna really have fun tonight so they pocket that and they go through this mall they're drinking they're having a good time for the smallest things like ellie's going up and down the escalator and she's having a ball they find an arcade they find you know food stands they find they find a merry-go-round in the middle of the mall and i have a feeling it's the edmonton mall because it was shot in alberta and i'm like there's only like one mall that i know that would have like similar stores to ones in like toronto and that they would have a merry-go-round so i was like oh of course it has to. it could be the edmonton mall i think it is i'm not 100 sure but they filmed in alberta so they have these moments that you know ellie's like lingering staring at her a bit differently while riley's talking and you could tell that the direction for their relationship worked really well in this episode and i just liked that they had fun there was like this one night to have fun best friends they're in the photo booth they're close to each other they're you know they're dancing with masks on and having fun but of course we can't have nice things so not only does ellie get really really sad again there's a stitch of like the alcohol getting involved their emotions are always heightened she really doesn't want riley to go and it broke my heart because riley says that the fireflies chose her and then Ellie was like, well, I had you first. And it broke my heart because you don't want someone you're so close to to move on without you. You want to be a part of, you know, their happiness, their life. You want to be there for them. And for Ellie to know that she won't be there for Riley is just breaking her. So she like storms off and she starts crying and she leaves Riley there. But she feels guilty. She's like, she planned this wonderful night and I'm going to ruin it because of my, you know, my feelings, my emotions. Let me just enjoy the night for what it is and not think about what's going to happen in the future. It was, it was really sad. It was. And then, you know, they came back together and unexpectedly, like Ellie and Riley, they kiss. And it was just the cutest freaking moment ever it was adorable i'm sorry to the haters out there really don't care what you think about this episode because it was just a very sweet moment between the two of them they're giggling it's awkward it's like this first love feel and i love that i thought it was really nice that they integrated that obviously foreshadowing what ends up happening in uh season two but like i said Things don't always go according to plan and there is a clicker roaming the mall and he ends up finding Riley and Ellie. A fight ensues and we see that both Riley and Ellie, they get bitten. We don't know how long Riley has. We don't know how long Ellie has. She only knew one thing about getting bitten and she knew that she was going to turn instantly. She didn't realize that her you know, her body, her blood was going to counteract what was happening in her system with the bite, essentially. So that happens and we cut back to Joel. So in this case, we know what happens with Riley. We know what goes on with Ellie. And now she's back with Joel. And she is frantically, as I mentioned before, trying to find bandages, trying to find anything to mend the deep cut that he had she ends up finding like a sewing needle and a thread and does exactly what you guys think she would do she's trying to mend joel on her own by sewing the the deep cut herself and that's what we get from this episode you see so much of ellie 
and what happens to her in the past. And Riley is a big part of who she is, where the anger comes from, where the understanding is, is that you have to latch on to the closest person that actually gets you to trust them. You know, you have to trust people. And even if it's one person that you trust or it's one person that you really do care about, you hold on to them for dear life because anything can happen and we say life is short and life is really short. So I liked this episode. I I think I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 this episode. I'm really happy that we got to see how, uh, how amazingly talented Bella Ramsey is. So, yeah, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I'm pretty sure it gets worse moving down these episodes, as I've heard. I didn't watch the trailer for next week. I've been going in blind constantly, so I'm really happy about that. Let me know if you enjoyed episode 7 of The Last of Us. I'm really sad it's coming to an end, but it's just so, so good. And this is just a great show all around. So let me know if you enjoyed this episode. Let me know if you're enjoying the season. And let me know what you are expecting for the last couple episodes of this season in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can always follow me over at AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. I'll catch you guys next time. Keep watching movies.